Okay, welcome to our Arif Shabbat Parashat class. Parashat Behar. Do we recognize the righteous, gentle among us, Gentile among us? That is the question. Who am I referring to? Uh, we're going to dig in to a very small phrase, a very short phrase in our parasha. And when we do, a world of ideas will open up with God's help. And there is application of this concept that we'll see um, in our very time, possibly hard to say more than ever, but uh, in, at its peak in terms of Jewish history, possibly. So what are we referring to? Well, in Parashat Behar, after the laws of Shemitah and Yovel, the sabbatical year and the Jubilee year, and then rolling into the laws of sales of property and home during that period of time and values and giving, going back to original owners, and then segueing into how that works by Levi'im and slowly um, rolling into concepts of tzedakah, there is a pasuk with just a mentioning at the end of the pasuk that's going to be the source of our discussion. And we can see on the source sheet that we're using, this is in Parashat Behar, by Yikra, Perek Kafe, chapter 25, pasuk Lamed Hev, verse 35. And it says as follows. This is actually a pasuk that two years ago in this class, we used as one of the great sources of the, of the concept of tzedakah, charity, to the Jewish nation. But here, when your fellow man falls on hard times, begins to slip and descends in his life, uh, let's assume financially, says the Torah, that's the key term that we've discussed in the past, the obligation to embrace those who are struggling to uplift them, give them loans, put them back on their feet, what have you. And the last four words of this pasuk, ger v'toshab v'hay emach. Let's just translate that literally. A stranger and a resident and live with you. Who is that referring to? Well, you have the word there, ger, and ger can mean stranger or convert. And you have the word toshab, it just means a, a dweller. Those who, he dwelleth among you or a resident and live with you. Is that a command? Is that an expectation? Who is that referring to? And we actually see this term only two other times, Ger v'toshad, in the whole Torah. Once is in a few pesukim from now, about 14 pesukim from now, and the other one was with Abraham Abinu, who declared himself in front of Ben Ehei when he was trying to bury his wife Sarah, Ger v'toshad, he called himself a Ger v'toshad. Okay, so um, there is actually a source in the Midrash, well, the Torah Kohanim, the Midrash Halakha, Sefer Vayikra, that identifies two different types of people in that phrase, Ger, representing the Ger Sedek, and Toshav, what's called the Ger Toshav, uh, critical labels and categorizations, but we'll get to explaining shortly. Um, but I'll just tell you that by and large, most of the Pashtanim, those who analyze the Pshat of the language, the nuances of the text of Torah, explain this to be a single phrase identifying a single person, even though it says Ger Vetoshav, a stranger and a resident, uh, possibly implying two different descriptions. But most um, take this to mean, despite that Midrash I just quoted you, referring to one. Now, um, while, as I just mentioned, that other source that says it's possibly alluding to Ger Sedek. Let's just for a moment digress and explain Ger Sedek. Ger Sedek, a righteous convert, is one who converts to Judaism full fledged, becomes a full fledged 100% Jew. There's Mizvat Aseh, Mizvat Lot Aseh, embracing him, taking care of him, bringing him in, including him. There's not, there's no, not, not less than 22 references in our Torah to how we should treat the get. And so righteous converts not only have a place in our nation, but the first righteous convert that we know of, Ruta Moabiyah, the great grandmother of David HaMelech, and the, the mother of the future descendants of him, whole Davidic king of royalty, future descendant, which is Melech HaMashiach, 
some other famous getting we know in Kilus the Ger, where we study on Chumash all the time. Shemayat Abtalion, the rabbis of Shemay and Hillel were converts, and descendants of other great Achamim Tanaim, including the Biakiba, and many great people in our nation's history were either righteous converts or descendants of them. But we are not going to discuss, and we're not even going to go according to that source that feels that the Ger Sedek is being alluded to in this Pasu. Rather, we're going to go to the, with the vast majority of commentaries and sources that say that this is referring to this term, Ger Vitoshav, one person, and that person is known as a Ger Toshav. Ger Toshav, literally resident convert. But it's not referring to a convert in the way we think of a convert. What is it referring to? Who is this person? Actually, and we can see this on the first source of our source, Shidim Masechet Abu Dazara, um, page 64b, there are three opinions as to what a Ger Toshav is. And it says, Ezehu Ger Toshav. Rabbi Meir's opinion is, I'm not going to read it directly, I'll paraphrase for you, you can look at it, is anyone, any non-Jew, that in front of three people, three Jews, takes upon himself not to worship idolatry. The other opinion, which is the mainstream opinion that we we'll we'll spend time well, talking the about, complete. is the opinion of Hachamim. Yeah, well, not really. opinion is that a Ger Toshab is um, a, a Gentile that took upon himself to observe the Sheva Mizvot B'nei Noah, the seven Noah laws, which in, of course includes the prohibition of worshiping Abu Dazar idolatry. And then there's a third opinion that's more extreme the other way that says it's a boy that took upon himself really all the mizvot besides eating non-kosher. Because there's another pasuk in the Torah that says, Lo Give the ger, the nevila, the non-kosher meat. So based on that, this opinion says it's a goy that took upon himself all mizvot, all of the mizvot of Torah besides that. The accepted opinion, as we're going to see momentarily, is that middle opinion, that it's the ger that committed himself to follow, which is the obligation of goyim, and we'll see this in the source in the Rambam, the seven Noahide laws. Don't murder, don't steal, no adultery, Abu Dazara, have a court, system, believe in God, and uh, every minute high slaughtering an animal before you eat it. So um, that's the definition we're going with. Let's look at another source in Masechet Baba Mesia'ah that analyzes another pasuk and says, Ger uh, is Ger Sedek, Bish'arecha is Zo Ochel Nevelot, referring to this Ger Sedek, and later, Ger Toshav rather, and later in this source, the bottom line there to be you say, but to be you that Omer Ger Toshav Yeshbo Mishum Beyomo to Ten Sekharo. Ms. What treatment the way we uh, approach this person, this Ger Toshav in society? Here's an example of uh, the Mizvah of paying him uh, on his payday and not being late to pay him. It's a Mizvah that we, we usually are obligated vis a vis our fellow man. And now the Gemara is saying, being vis a vis this Ger Toshav. And here's the Rambam codifying, and he addresses in really three different sections of the Mishneh Torah, codifying Ger Toshav. So the first one is the laws of Isure Be'ah, forbidden relations. He says, as it will Ger Toshav, he asks rhetorically to try to define this person. He says, Zegoi Goim Shekebel Alav Shelo Ya'avod, this is Abu Dazarai, Im Sha'ad Mizbosh Nishtabbeu B'nei Noah. The seven Mizbosh but then, oh, lo ma, lo he didn't uh, get a brit milah or go into the mikveh like a regular righteous get would. And he says, you accept him. And he is of the righteous of the Gentiles. And why is he called Toshav a resident? Because he may live and we're allowed to let him settle. Why do you need to say aloud? We'll see soon. He can settle amongst us and live in Eretz Yisrael, the Holy Land, with us. We're happy to have him there. Another critical source on the Rambam, in Halachot Melachim, the laws of kings, um, 
speaking about, and I'll paraphrase the beginning, that Moshe Rabbeinu uh, gave Torah, the messenger from God, the conduit to give Torah and his word to Am Yisrael. Um, and anyone who wants to convert from the other nations, uh, they may and they may join us. You can never force someone who's not a Jew to convert. Um, but all of the Gentiles must accept the seven Noahide laws and anyone who didn't is in big trouble. And at the end of this source, the Rambam says, that he who takes upon himself the Gentile, those seven laws, it's called a Ger Toshav. You have to accept him if it's in front of three, he says, make it official. Um, and that's consistent with his definition in the other uh, category of halachot. But I want to look, may, turn your attention to the next law in this chapter of the Rambam that says as follows, takes it to the next level. Halachai Yud Aleph. This is in Halachot Malachim, Perek. Not only accepts them, but he's scrupulous. He's, he's, he's conscientious in living that lifestyle of, of, of keeping and committing to those seven mizvot. He's the righteous of the nations. Something that the Rambam also utters in the laws of Teshuvah, that the righteous of the Gentiles have a portion in the world to come. We're going to see the neighbor, maybe. I remember you from my old block. There he is in Olam Haba, joining us. He must have been righteous. Um, amazing. And one other detail in another law, you see that underline, he does. He says, He's talking about Yerushalayim. The residency, however, is limited. Yerushalayim, no. Yerushalayim, live in Israel, dwell in all the cities, enjoy from coast to coast, but not in Yerushalayim. Okay, interesting. So what I want to now really discuss is why. We have a chosen nation, that's us. You want to join our chosen nation, Tfadalu, you become a gay tzedek, a righteous Gentile, you get all the benefits of Judaism. Uh, why do we need some half-baked person getting his foot in the door in the world to come, right? That he wasn't part of the mm -hmm. descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't take upon himself to Ram his vote, right? So what we're really, um, and this you can only almost look at it, though it's not counted as one of the 613 as vote, as vote, it's an ex expectation, it's a halakha. And it's a whole category of people. Why? What does the Torah really want from us? I'm going to give you three possible applications and then really take a look at what's going on in the world right now around us. Application number one is Sefer HaChinuch. Sefer HaChinuch does discuss in Parashat Mishpatim, Mizvah 74. And this Mizvah, this is in Surah 5 on our page 2, is not to allow Abu Dazara to exist in our land or those who, who perform Abu Dazara, idolizers, talking about from the Gentiles. And uh, look in the reason Mishrosheha Mizvah is, Sefer Hanuk always gives the reason behind every single Mizvah, what the Torah told us, not to learn, obviously, from their ways. And he says, some of the specifics of Dinah Mizvah, of this Mizvah, uh, not allowing Abu Dazara to exist um, amongst us, um, is that um, even though uh, some Goyim are allowed to live amongst us, and that's called the Ger Toshav, Right? So that's because he decided not to take Abu Dazara upon himself. And if you just read between the lines, what Sefer Hanuk is really saying is that being a Ger Toshav is actually we're incentivizing, incentivizing a Gentile, aren't we? We are allowing him and almost inviting him to live in our land, a beautiful holy land, if you would only purify yourself and take this upon yourself. And we're de incentivizing. Those who don't, I'm sorry, stop sign, stop at the border, Im Im immigration authority. Uh, are you an idolater? I'm sorry, I can't let you in. Not only does that purify the land, that helps filter a little bit for what it's worth, the outside nations as well. Very practical, you see, reason to keep that standard and that, um, that threshold between types of goyim, idolaters versus not, and, uh, you know, keeping the sanctity of the land, but also nudging the goyim. Keep these mizvot. There's good perks that come with them. Now, there's another whole 
um, realm of ideas. And I brought, uh, there are many that uh, discuss this concept vis-a-vis -vis our, our Ger Toshav. I brought two of them. One of them is the Abad Banel. Abad Banel, talking about the Ger Toshav and our parasha, says, well, what does the Torah want from us? Let's look at our Pasuk again in the beginning. What does it say? Now that we know it's the Ger Toshav, Ger Toshav v'hayimach. He lived amongst you. So, so far we know that he's allowed to live amongst you all over Eretz Yisrael besides Yerushalayim. And we read a Gemara that says even a, at least a Mizvah we're obligated to conduct ourselves with. Well, there's more. Says the Abad Vanel, he says, I'll call Parim Kevan Shuhur Emecha. He's with you now, right? He's your neighbor. You can't abandon him. Let him live with you. And with your help, he'll live a good life. So that, that two word charge in our, our Pasuk, is a little more broad than we thought. It really is. Facilitate this Ger Toshav, this righteous Ger who lives amongst you, to live a comfortable lifestyle among you. Give him what he needs. Give him full rights. I don't want to say the word citizenship because that was never a Torah idea, but perhaps that's how it plays out in our days. It's really brought in. And Rabbi Hirsch is discussing this and really taking notice as to why it says, by a Ger Toshav, Vahay Emach, and by a Jew it says, Behe Ahicha Emach. Behe with a Sere and Bahai. And he points out what the difference is between the two. And one being an inherent, an innate identity, as opposed to someone else that has an identity only vis-a-vis uh, -vis someone else and how they relate to him. This Ger Toshav has no innate identity, he says. His identity is only brought out, of course, he's being righteous, but vis-a-vis -vis the way Am Yisrael who dwelleth around him is treating him. And at the end of his words, he says that because of what he did, first of all, he acquired the right to live in Israel and accordingly, the duty to assist him is Baha'i Imach, is, is telling us that um, his living amongst you, um, he's not yet Achicha, he's not your brother, but that is the entire way that you could relate to him, or else what is he doing in your life? Only the way you treat him. That is his identity. That's Baha'i Imach, you're giving him life. Because you are showing the appreciation and recognition for what he does. You're embracing him and uh, accommodating his life. It's really a just cause. This treatment of Ger Toshab is a just and fair cause from the perspective of Am Yisrael. Recognize righteous Gentiles. Encourage them. Show them they're doing the right thing. There's a whole group no I movement right now. They say up to 50,000 goyim in the world right now. And there's actually academies for them in Eretz Yisrael and other places in the diaspora. Where we are, there are people, there are rabbis that work on this, recognizing the righteous Gentiles. But what I want to point out, the third and final purpose, is something that opens a new door. And that is by, by the great Meshech Chochmah. Um, and the Meshech Chochmah, and I'm just going to cut to the end of it, says as follows. He says, like I said before, a ger toshav, um, really his innate value, because he's not a Jew, he doesn't have a Jewish soul, so to speak. He's not of the chosen nation. He has no automatic perks. He doesn't automatically, he's not born with a portion of olam haba. Everything that he is, his spirituality, and the way he clings to God is only because he's emach, Baha'i emach. And if you don't, his words are, If you don't embrace him, if you don't encourage him, guess where he's going? Back amongst the 8 billion Gentiles in the rest of the world. It's our obligation as a Jewish people and to model for the rest of the Gentile nations of the world to show everyone that this is the expectancy of the creator of the world for the Gentiles. You have a place on this earth. And we not only have uh, aspirations for you, 
we very much encourage you to have to fill that that those shoes and to populate the world in a manner of sanctity of the human race that God expected. You might not be part of our chosen nation, but there not only is a place for you, but if you take that place, we respect you, we honor you, we recognize you, we encourage you. And if we don't do that, guess what? What do we expect from them? They tried and they fizzled out. That's our fault. And throughout the course of Jewish history, many great Jews, many Jewish communities recognize the obligation, not just to Mikadesh Hashem, uh, to the rest of the world and be a, indirectly a light of the nations, but to really recognize righteous Gentiles. Uh, we do it now uh, in terms of the Holocaust and remembrance. We, have, we recognize righteous Gentiles during that terrible, tragic period of time. And we see, I just saw yesterday, just yesterday, a couple of videos, one minister from Holland, another minister from Spain, these Gentiles speaking out with truth, Brilliant. bravery, uh, on behalf of the Jewish people, of the Jewish nation, of, of, of the state of Israel, talking truth, boldly, speaking their minds. We have a lot of them out there. There are a lot of righteous, standout, exceptional Gentiles in this world. And throughout this, uh, since October 7th saga, we've seen ministers from, and leaders from Germany and from Brazil and all over the place. And the moral of the story of our couple of short words in El Parasha, Ger Bahai Emach, is not only recognize him and treat him well, and even give him a place of residence in your land, but encourage him, embrace him, and facilitate his success so that that righteous Gentile uh, not only fulfills his personal obligation and benefits his place in the world to come, but impacts and influences and inspires other Gentiles around them to perform and live up to the expectations of a Kadosh Baruch Hu's creation of mankind. And that's why there is such an emphasis by the Torah of the Ger Toshav, the way we treat him and the law surrounding it. Because as Jews, our obligation is to be the light of the nations in general, but specifically to encourage the righteous Gentiles so they too can be the paradigm for mankind and the light of the nations as well. Amen. 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 Shabbat shalom. Amen.